Then they said Neda was still alive and living in Greece. In this report, we are trying to study Neda Agda Sultan's death from a different angle. In this state television documentary, witnesses were identified and marched back to the scene of the murder. Here, Neda's music teacher was made to conform his story to the official version. It was now up to the other key witness who had seen the besiege at the scene to speak. Every life a moment comes that the integrity of some person would be tested. And I realized on that day that this was the moment in my life that I, would, I had to choose whether to uh, keep myself safe or uh, prove my integrity. Pictures of the death of Neda Sultan have appalled people around the world. The man who tried to save her has been talking about what happened. Dr. Hejazi flew to the UK and went public. Her blood was draining out of her body and I was just putting pressure on the wounds to try to stop the bleeding. He remains the key eyewitness on the record for which he's paid a high price. I cannot go back to Iran. I know uh, I had received threats here, even here, anonymous threats, <clears throat> uh, which concern me a little bit about my personal security and safety. And that's just because I talked. I never knew. I, I've worked in literature all my life, and I always talked about and preached about the power of words. But I never realized how powerful words can be. Since the summer, Iran's authorities have restored an appearance of normality with the strictest controls. Through the fall, they televised show trials where reformist supporters were made to recant. Then in October, the regime tried to script the end of Netta's story. But instead, Netta's mother made a very public stand. The government offered her financial help if she would blame Netta's death on opponents of the regime. All she had to do was to agree to call Netta a martyr for the Islamic Republic. But she refused. Neda died for her country, not so I could get a monthly income from the Martyr Foundation. If these officials say Neda was a martyr, why do they keep wiping off the word martyr, which people write in red on her gravestone? Like others in this film, Delbar Tavakuli now lives in exile. She landed in Turkey, the place where Neda and boyfriend Caspian Makan had met for the first time. That was where they had gotten emotionally involved. But less than a year on, with all the dreams they'd had, one of them is dead, another is in prison. And I'm here for my part in trying to get the real story out. Neda loved traveling. And she traveled a lot, as much as she could anyway. But most of all, she loved Turkey. She loved Istanbul and she wanted to leave there at some point. Neda always said she would leave Iran if she had only one day left of her life. Caspian was kept in Avin prison for 65 days, then put under house arrest through the fall until just recently, when he escaped and fled over the Turkish border. He spoke to us from hiding. When I was leaving, I was taking in everything in Tehran. 
It was full of people who were so weighed down. It was hard to leave the place where I have lived all my life. I am 38 years old. I love Iran. I always would love Iran. It was worse because I was about to leave Neda's resting place. I couldn't accept Neda's death. I can't accept it now. I'm waiting until I see her again. <laughs>